All right, lads and lasses, and uh, welcome back to Kickback Garage. Now, this video has been a long time in the making. Uh, I have been working round the clock, but I find myself in the position of having two full three days off work, and I really, really want to get this uh, this thing finished, <laughs> done and dusted. So I'm going to be working really hard now to uh, complete this project. So if that's something you fancy having a look at, uh, let's have a look. There we go. Oh, da, 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 da. If that's something you fancy having a look at, then uh, grab yourself a cup of coffee and uh, stick around and stay tuned. Right, so since the uh, last episode, I've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> but uh, one thing I've just started doing now is I'm just uh, tying down this uh, wiring loom with some uh, normal uh, zip ties. I'm just gonna cut off the ends there just to tidy it up a little bit. Now, uh, I was fully intentionally going to be using uh, these, uh, let's have a look, yeah, you can see it there. I was gonna, I was fully intentional on uh, using these uh, aluminum strips that are, that are sort of original to uh, Lambretta's and uh, I've used, uh, in the past, I've used uh, the stainless steel ones from uh, MB Developments and uh, I find those really, really hard to tighten down. So what I did this time is I bought the aluminium ones from uh, Scootopia, which uh, are uh, uh, slightly easier to uh, tighten down, but after you've tightened them down, <laughs> when you go to bend over the last corner there, they just snap. So that was pretty uh, useless, really. So uh, anyway, I, I've decided I'm just going to use uh, plastic zip ties. But what I do here is I, uh, I zip tie down the wiring loom, as you see. And the only uh, zip tie I use on the wires themselves is this one here, just in front of the uh, bridge piece. And that is so that in a later date, if I need to change these outers, then I can just snip, snip off the zip tie and I can feed them through without taking off any bodywork. So I find that pretty practical. Um, yeah, so that was that one I was going to show you. And I will uh, have a look at something else. So first, uh, first thing I've done is uh, I've fit this rubber to the toolbox because I want to fit the toolbox first. Um, several different ways of uh, fitting these. You can, you can cut the corners to ease the uh, rubber on but these rubbers here I found from uh, Scootopia they're very very supple so I didn't have to put them in water or anything like water or anything like that and I could actually ease them on it's like a profile you can see that here it's like a profile which matches the profile on the toolbox here so just uh, I put those on and to get them over the corners I, I sort of press them towards the corner there and I could just about manage to uh, get it over there without uh, cutting it. As you can see maybe it's slightly taller in the corners because of that but when I tighten this puppy down then uh, that'll be squished flat I reckon uh, so I'm going to take the chance of not cutting those and that's simply the simply slots in here get it in there like so and you've got uh, special fasteners for the uh, toolbox they look like this this kit in particular is from uh, from Scootopia Let me just open that and it, it sort of cons it con consists of just get that out there consists of this uh, funny looking bolt here and these hook up inside under the uh, hole in the toolbox in the front you've got two here and you've got a special bracket in the top of the uh, the frame there where they slot in so they sit like this and you have this bracket here and you'll see it's on when you look at the toolbox you'll see there's like hooks so you know which way to place those You've got this special shim that sits on the back, like so. And they come with a nut, but this is, these are like sort of standard nuts. 
but I like to uh, swap these out for this type with the nylock because uh, you don't want those puppies rattling loose it's just uh, for extra security and uh, that's job done so uh, let me crack on with this and uh, see how I do so basically you loosen these off all the way or okay or even uh, take them all the way off <laughs> and you hook them up under here under the toolbox you've got like a slot there if I can get my mm, try and fit it under there where are you where are you like so and do that on both sides and then you just hook this bracket up underneath the toolbox on the hook there like so fit the special washer and then you just tighten those down so I'll turn off the camera I'm going to try and be a little bit effective today I'll turn off the camera and I'll uh, fit those so you've got two at the bottom and you've got one at the top right so that's the toolbox uh, fitted um, looks really nice there now there is absolutely no point in uh, over tightening these uh, bolts here you just want to take the air gap uh, away between the rubber and the frame there and a couple of things I forgot to mention was uh, if you decide to uh, use nylocks then you can take off this uh, tab washer because this is uh, this is just to hold the normal type uh, screw in place or, or not if you will and I normally use uh, like I've done here I just use a spring washer uh, it just makes things a little bit easier it's not factory spec but it uh, sort of brings it into the modern times uh, another little thing to uh, oh yeah uh, that was what I was going to say as well these uh, special screws that fit in the uh, toolbox here, uh, two different sizes. The long ones are at the bottom and the short one is at the top. I thought I shouldn't really need to mention that because there is two and one. But uh, yeah, just, just be aware of that when you're fitting this. That uh, The two long ones, they go at the bottom. Um, and if I do a bit of wobbly cam, let's have a look if I can poke, poke you in there. I'm not sure how good. Oh, you can see it quite well. Uh, you can see on the toolbox here, there's a hook at the top and a hook, like a hole recess at the top here inside, and there's a little hook in the bottom there. Now, that is for uh, it's a special spring retainer that you fit there, and that was for the original uh, tools that came with the scooter. Now, I haven't got that springy thing. But uh, if you want 100% uh, authenticity, then uh, yeah, you can get all of those from uh, most scooter dealers, I imagine. I've never had to never used one myself because uh, they're a little bit in the way because I have all sorts of stuff in there. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, one to watch. And hopefully you can see how the nuts, when it's tightened up, how the nuts sit in the, in the bottom here, the screws. Uh, it's these. Um, referring to you sort of slide them in uh, the big hole and uh, put them in the big hole and then slide them in the little slot on the side there and you sort of have to hold these with your fingers while you tighten those up right so that's uh, that fitted I think you'll agree looks uh, pretty good now uh, the next thing I want to do is I think I want to fit the uh, petrol tank so uh, I've got that upstairs, I'm going to run up and pick it up and uh, show you how I do that. Right, I'm now ready to fit the petrol tank. Uh, a little one to watch here is there are actually three different types of uh, petrol tank rubbers. Uh, series ones, they're just like little blocks, about half the thickness of this. They just put into like a recess on the frame here, here and here. Um, and the uh, GPs or the, the later Series 3s, they've got like uh, a long rubber piece that you like sort of hook up onto here. But being this, because this is the early Series 3 type, uh, they're rubber blocks with a little uh, indentation in the bottom there that fits in a 
hole on the frame. Several different ways of doing this, but the way I'd like to do it is I actually fit the rubbers after I've slotted the tank into the frame there. It just makes it a little bit easier to get the frame into the, uh, <laughs> the frame, sorry, the tank into the frame. Um, I've already had one stumbling block and that was I have uh, the Scutopia um, oh <laughs> shit <laughs> I have the Scutopia type uh, petrol tank uh, tap as you can see here so the easiest way to do this is sort of put it in at an angle so the filler cap is that in there and this is the reason why I'm fitting this before uh, let's see if I can get it in there come on you bala there we go uh, I've got this uh, Scutopia petrol tap and I already stumbled upon a problem and that was that the, the nut that comes with the petrol tap is absolute rubbish. It's the biggest piece of crap I've ever tried to fit. The, uh, the thread stripped as soon as I tried to enter it on the, on the petrol tap here, even though I've taken off the pin on the... Uh, on the threads on the tank itself so that was pretty uh, dismal uh, I have seen uh, Instagram posts where they say they're making uh, super duper new quality petrol taps but this isn't one of them <laughs> but uh, lucky for me it, uh, I had one of these nuts lying around and this nut incidentally is off the um, sip type uh, petrol tap with the wires for the uh, for the low petrol tap warning and uh, that fit really nicely. So lucky for us, uh, SIP saved the day here and I managed to fit the petrol tap. So that's uh, one thing. And we've also bought here, we've also bought these petrol tank straps from uh, Scootopia. These are already painted and as you can see the paint match is, yeah, it's pretty much perfect which is uh, good. Uh, that's basically because the original ones that I had, they were really in a shoddy, shoddy state. Uh, another one to watch here is, do not be tempted to use, obviously these go around the tank like this, just to shape them. Uh, the trunnion is supposed to be fastened here at the front of the tank, but I prefer to do the non-standard factory <laughs> variant where I fit the uh, Twenians on the back side of the tank here. Now, uh, there's two reasons for that. Uh, one reason is because it does, if you get the angle wrong here, then you're going to have problems fitting your uh, air filter box, which is uh, going here. And uh, if you need to take out your tank at some time, it makes it a lot, lot easier. And they're a lot easier to get to the uh, Twenians if you fasten them on the back side here. And... Uh, yeah, only uh, only the anoraks will notice that, and uh, I, I, it's just the way I prefer to do it. So what I'll do, what I do is I ease this round, I uh, push in the rubbers, and tighten it all down. Another one to watch while I'm doing this is, um, do not be tempted. This is the uh, Trinian itself. This is actually the original one that came with the scooter. And I have tried this, all the threads are good, so and it's straight. So I'll be keeping this one because I believe these are the best ones you can get hold of at the moment, actually. Um, do not be tempted to use the uh, Asian uh, type ones, the shiny ones uh, that have been produced in uh, Asian countries because they are seriously, seriously cheese. So if you buy something like a um, long-range fuel tank that requires the longer straps, do not use the trunnions on those. <laughs> you, you, they just strip instantly if you're uh, really lucky. And if you're really unlucky like I was on mine, um, you'll, see, you'll seize them on the threads and you'll have a real nightmare trying to take those off to replace them with quality items. Um, like I said, the original ones are the best if they're in good nick, uh, like these are. Or you can also use the MB ones. And whichever ones I use, I like to put a dab of um, uh, copper grease on these just to uh, prevent them from, uh, from seizing up there.
Right, people, so that is the uh, tank in situ. What I've done is basically I fit the tank strap that hooks up underneath the frame here and through the frame on the series uh, three. On the series two, it doesn't go, uh, there isn't a hole here. Uh, and thread it round and I just thread the uh, trunnion in about two or three, two or three uh, turns. So that keeps it loose. I've done the same on both sides. And I was actually able to uh, press the rubbers in afterwards, which is uh, actually fairly easy. And as you see, I have fit the trunnion on the rear here, which is the wrong place it's supposed to be, as I said, on the front. So I'll just uh, fit that there and I'll uh, start tightening those down. Now, a little one to watch is, the, when you tighten down these trunnions, your tank will move. If you've got them at the front, it'll move for, uh, forwards. And if you've got them on the back here, it will uh, have a tendency to tilt backwards a little bit. So what I do is I adjust the tank so that it faces uh, forward slightly when I'm on the back here, there we go, like so. So that when I start tightening these down evenly, it will straighten up the tank so that the uh, filler cap lines up with a hole on the top of the uh, frame loop here. Right chaps, that's the uh, uh, fuel tank in place. Uh, just uh, one li another little thing that I uh, should have mentioned is just keep an eye on your fuel tap because if you get the wrong angle on the, on the, on the tank or uh, some aftermarket fuel taps in conjunction with the uh, bigger uh, uh, silent blocks uh, you can have uh, very little clearance in between here and they can actually uh, touch the silent block. So uh, keep an eye on that one as well. And that's that's why I like to fit the fuel tap uh, before I tighten down the tank, just so they can uh, keep an eye on that. And I've tightened that down now. And uh, next job is to fit the, uh, well, what's it called? Air filter bolts, <laughs> which will be all exciting because I've actually never had a scooter where I've had to fit one of those. I've heard it can be a little bit, bit of a pain, but uh, we'll see. I'm sure I'll uh, sort it out. Right, just uh, test fitting the uh, air filter box here, and uh, that goes in uh, quite, quite nicely, except for one little niggle that I've got here, and that is the trunnion screw that tightens down the uh, toolbox that is catching so I've wound it down so much that that is actually catching on the top edge of the uh, air filter box so I think what I think I'm going to do I'm going to get a little get my dremel in there and just uh, cut that down to size so that can uh, be moved so the air filter box can be moved slightly further forward uh, so that I can uh, slot the screws in a little bit easier that retain it at the top there. Now I like to use Allen bolt uh, screws for those. I don't think they used those originally. I think originally they used something like a cheese head screw uh, or a slotted screw, but uh, I like to use Allen ones there. Don't forget, uh, fit the new rubber to the uh, air filter box so that that fits snugly in the top of the frame. Uh, and also got a new rubber for the uh, air intake, which is a Scootopia job, which fits underneath the air scoop. As you can see, beautifully painted the wrong color. This should be the frame's color, but this has uh, been painted white. A little bit of a misunderstanding between the owner and the, and the, um, and the painter, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna be hidden by the, by the seat anyway, and we can call that custom, custom painted. So when you fit this, uh, Oi, ooh, whoop, I'm getting caught up in my camera. Uh, when you fit this, you you see you've got like this little bracket bit at the bottom here, and you've got a special nut. This one in particular is from uh, Scootopia. Let me just put that down. And if you see the back side of this, it's square, and not the uh, not the normal hex. So. Uh, this special little screw that slots into the bracket on the frame there and you tighten it down. Um, originally you would use a normal non-nylock nut but as you know I like to 
change these to a, a stainless my look jobby just to make that fit properly so get the dremel out and uh, try and get in there ease it in and uh, just cut the end off the uh, the screw there to ease so i can ease in the uh, air filter box and i'm gonna have to move the camera very sorry about that basically because i cannot get to it with the camera in the way right well voila so that was the uh, air box fit i have also fit the uh, as you can see the air intake scoop with my uh, hex keys uh, all went in pretty good uh, i did actually have to uh, loosen the bolts on the air box a little bit at the bottom there just so they could bring bring the air box further forward because that was uh, it was catching on the top edge not just on the screw there's sort of an indentation for the screw so I, uh, I only had to take off a couple of threads there, but I had to sort of turn the uh, toolbox slightly round so that I could get them in properly. Uh, and inside here, I have fit the uh, BGM high floor air filter. And the next job is to uh, fit the carb. But first off, uh, on the carb, I want to show you how I fit the uh, choke cable because that can be a little bit tricky. I'm not sure how easy it is for you to see this, but I'll try my best. I'm trying to reach around the camera and do fiddly jobs at the same time. It's pretty difficult. So uh, we start with the, when we're going to fit the choke cable, uh, one thing to note is that if you have uh, a big cob, if you're a big cob man, then you need a different choke cable, probably a uh, different lengths. Uh, you can adjust these, you can make them yourself really just by basically using a throttle, bit of throttle cable with the, there you see that the, the nipple on the end there is the same as the throttle cable uh, and you could solder a blob on the end there but this one I've already tried to fit this and it fits although it is a little bit of a bugger. Also thing to note is this uh, chalk lever here, I actually bought, this was painted and uh, I didn't fancy the prospects of actually uh, trying to polish this up but problem being uh, I bought a aftermarket one from Scrutopia and the handle was uh, sitting about 75 degrees when I fit it to the frame and I don't like that so I ended up uh, using a bit of time uh, taking off the paint off the uh, off the handle here and uh, yeah and jobs are good and so first thing to do is you have to fit the sleeve to the cable now, I had to actually modify this a little bit. I just used a, a file just to shorten down the little uh, nipple on the end there so I could actually fit it in the whole recess on the choke mechanism. So, first thing to do is you fit this sleeve, like so, push your cable through and you hook it on. I'm really sorry if I'm in the way of the camera, but you sort of hook it on in here. Let's see if I can get it in. It's a bit tight. Oh, I'm calling you a little bugger. Mm -hmm. It's typical, isn't it? I've already fit this once, so I know it fits. But now that I go to try and show you, it, ah, there we go. Good. Got it to slide in there. So that fits there in the hole there. Uh, good idea, just uh, just crimp that slightly. Just use a pair of pliers, just so that it, it won't pop out the hole there. And then you slide this uh, sleeve over your choke mechanism. If I can, like so. There we go. And now we have to mess around with this side. Now, as you can see, I've already fitted the rubber boot from my choke and this is the choke mechanism from the uh, Delotto carb I'm using, which is a PHBH25. Slip that through there. And then you've got your spring. Uh, the, <laughs> the name of the game here is you've got to compress the spring so that you can hook that nipple on the barrel here 
on the uh, choke mechanism or the choke plunger. Thing is, it's a real pain in the ass. There you go, I pushed the uh, holding the spring with a nail and it's extremely painful. Ow. Ow. Oh, there she is. So she's in there, right? So one thing to watch here is, is that it's very important that when you're fitting the choke that the plunger actually seals off. Here's my cob that the plunger actually seals at the bottom of the cob there. You can see the hole there for the jet. So I push this in like this now. Will I? Yes I will. There we go. There, and I can actually see the plunger's in the bottom of the uh, choke, uh, in the bottom of the cob there, because I need some resistance to compress the spring a little bit more. So that will work perfectly and obviously I've got a little bit of adjustment on the adjuster up there as well. So that's the uh, choke cable fit. Put the securing cap on the top there, like so. Let the spring down. And it'll sit like this. Now the reason why I haven't tightened this down on the end is because I've got sort of a universal throttle cable. And what I want to do is fit this to the cob. And then I use the solderless nipple on the top and just cut off the access and that's job done. So I'll uh, conclude this video there and <laughs> and now obviously this isn't going to there you go. Right so uh, because I need to uh, maybe shorten the uh, throttle universal throttle cable a little bit I'm going to fit the cob off camera and I'll uh, love you and leave you there and next video I should have already fitted the cob and that should be ready to fire up so I can uh, check the timing. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, uh, let's have a look, can you see? Yes you can. The petrol rod, even though this is the Scootopia petrol tap, I've got the original tank in the original place, the petrol tap is sticking out about <laughs> about a centimetre centimeter and a half further than I would really like. So what I'm going to do there, uh, because I'm short of time, instead of buying the MB Adjuster Watson jig that I used on my last scooter, I'm simply going to cut this uh, bar and then grind down the flat and drill a hole so they can bring the whole mechanism in. So that, that should be uh, looking a little bit better. That looks terrible, doesn't it, with the uh, extension there. And hopefully in the next video, what I want to do is uh, start a rope, check the timing, and I want to fit these uh, rubber protectors with the clips uh, for the side panels. And I also want to fit the uh, leg shield, headset top, uh, rest of the bodywork, and maybe we can even uh, go for a ride. So I reckon that is about three videos away. And uh, yeah, brilliant. We're cooking on gas here. I've got something done today and uh, I'll catch you all in the next video. So do the old subscribe, give me the old thumbs up. Any comments down below, just uh, throw them down there and uh, I'll see you in the next one, lads. Okay, ta -ra.